Peter, it's okay if we start? Yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, it's my it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Javier Fersan from Ecole Polytechnique uh, in France, and he's going to uh, speak about a non-hypergeometric E function. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you, everyone, for being there. So I'm <clears throat> going to to tell you about this uh, joint work with uh, Peter, <clears throat> where we we answer a, a question by Siegel about uh, E functions. So the first thing I'm going to, to do is to, to recall the definition of, uh, of an E function and <clears throat> to explain why Siegel was interested in, in such an object and give some examples and then uh, formulate the question and the answer. And then in, in the second part, I, I'll, I'll give some ideas about the, the proof. Okay, so let's, let's go. So um, <laughs> definition. is due to Siegel in uh, 90, uh, 99, uh, 1929. <clears throat> so an E function. So it's a particular kind of power series uh, that satisfies a differential equation and some growth condition on the on the coefficients. Okay, so uh, for, for to, to, to formulate the definition, it's convenient to, to write it like this. So uh, an E function is, is a power series okay, I'm going to denote the coefficient by a n over n factorial and then the variable z. <clears throat> so it's a power series with algebraic coefficients. Okay, and you already can guess why it is called an E function because if you do a n equals to one for all n, then you get the exponential. Okay, uh, so it's a it's a power series like this, and then uh, two conditions. So that's that. First, it uh, satisfies a differential equation. And by this, I mean that there exists some uh, um, differential operator, a non-zero differential operator that uh, annihilates the function. <clears throat> and this is this is equivalent to asking that the the, the coefficients uh, of your of your um, power series they satisfy some uh, polynomial recurrence relation. Okay, so for example, even if I'm asking that they are algebraic, uh, this will automatically imply that they, they live in some number field. So this is the, the condition about the differential equation. And then, the, as I said, there is a growth condition. Uh, <clears throat> that says that essentially we want the coefficients and their denominators to, 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 to grow at most geometrically. Okay, so you, you need to be a bit careful about what it means because these are algebraic numbers. And uh, what it means is that there exists some uh, number C, real number C, <clears throat> such that um, yeah, you would like to say a n is uh, at most uh, C to the, uh, to the n. <clears throat> but then uh, since uh, the absolute value of a n, but since it's an algebraic number, it is always more reasonable to ask this condition for all Galois conjugates. So you want that this uh, this is uh, this is true for all n at least one and sigma in the Galois group uh, of Q. This is the condition about the coefficient, and then uh, about the denominator. So if you if you call d um, the smallest integer d n, sorry, the smallest integer. Uh, such that when you when you consider the first n coefficients, uh, they become algebraic integers. Oh, sorry, I should write n. <clears throat> okay, so if 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 the coefficients were rational, this is really a common denominator of the n or n plus one first coefficients, and you want that this also grows uh, at most like uh, c to the n. No, this satisfies dn is at most c to the n. 
Okay, so this is the this is the definition of a of an e function, and well, as I said, the the, the first example is the exponential, which uh, obviously uh, satisfies a, a differential equation, and then uh, in 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 that case, all a and are equal to one, so uh, growth conditions are are obvious in this particular case. <laughs> okay, and then um, is is the definition okay? Any any questions? Yeah, so let me say a few words about the motivation. <clears throat> so the motivation was coming from uh, transcendent uh, theory, and it was uh, the the Hermit Lindemann Weierstrass theorem. Which says that if you uh, are given uh, Algebraic numbers, so you consider n algebraic numbers, um, which are uh, q linearly independent. Then their exponentials are algebraically independent. Okay, so it's one of the most beautiful theorems in, in, in number theory of the 19th century. It contains the uh, transcendence of uh, E, of P, and, uh, and in general, uh, one should read this as saying that uh, the only way that uh, um, algebraic relations between the exponentials of uh, algebraic numbers can arise is uh, because of there exists already a a functional relation between the exponentials of these numbers. And, and those are exactly uh, coming from the Q linear relations between, between the, the, the exponents here. Okay, this, this will be more clear when I state the general theorem. Okay, so uh, this was uh, Siegel's motivation because uh, one would like to, to, to generalize this theorem to other special functions. And uh, the, the, his main, uh, Goal was to do this for the for the Bessel functions that I'm going to I'm going to write down in a in a moment. Uh, but the, the the problem is that all all proofs of this uh, theorem, uh, at least before Siegel, they uh, rely uh, heavily on uh, this particular property of the exponential that we like very much is that the exponential of alpha plus beta is uh, exponential of alpha times exponential of beta. And this is very useful because it allows you to reduce algebraic relations to, to linear relations, and, and, and those are always uh, easier to study. So it was not clear at all how, to, how this could be generalized to other, to other functions, like a Bessel function. And, 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 and this is the, the, the definition of an E function is, uh, is what <clears throat> well, Siegel, Siegel came with uh, to, to, to be able to have theorems of the, of the same kind. <laughs> and the, 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 um, the final result in this direction was this, what is now called the siegel sidlovsky theorem. That says that if you, if you are given a, a bunch of E functions, E1, EN, so these are E functions, that they satisfy a, a, a system of uh, linear differential equations. Okay, so here, uh, this A will be a N times N uh, matrix with coefficients in, um, the coefficients are rational functions with uh, algebraic coefficients. And then there are, if you take, uh, if you take uh, alpha, an algebraic number, then there are two, uh, let's say non-zero algebraic numbers, uh, number, then, well, you can you can do you can evaluate your functions at this alpha, and uh, typically uh, to understand all relations algebraic relations between these uh, values is to to understand the transcendence degree of um, the field generated by by the values. Yeah, and then what the theorem says is that. Uh, 
uh, this uh, transcendence degree is exactly the same as the transcendence degree of uh, the field generated by the functions. Okay, what well, this this was the meaning I wanted to to give to the when I said that the only way uh, an algebraic relation between the special values can arise is because there is already an algebraic uh, uh, relation between the functions. Okay, <clears throat> and this is of course the the the, the case of the, the the previous case is the case where you co uh, consider the functions uh, exponential of alpha i times z. Uh, uh, <clears throat> And then, uh, and then your a is uh, alpha one up to alpha n. And then, uh, if uh, if the alphas are linearly independent, then it means that this this degree uh, this degree here is uh, is n. Okay, so the the values will be algebraically uh, independent. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, what I wrote. Is not a hundred percent true. So I I excluded the zero here. This was necessary because the, the 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 term in degree zero is always an algebraic number, and there could be some other exceptions, but the other the only possibilities are the poles of the of the matrix A. So you should say A is non-zero and uh, not a pole of A. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I'm I'm not going to use this theorem, but this was just to to give you some motivation about the why why Siegel introduced this this notion. Okay, so let's let's do some examples. Um, well, kind of trivial example is uh, polynomials with uh, algebraic coefficients. Uh, I already mentioned a few times the the exponential. It was really the, the the motivating example. <laughs> and then uh, let me now write down the Bessel function. So there are, there are several variants of of it. So I'll take the the J's zero function. Which is defined as the so it's the generating series um, minus one to the n and factorial square and then z over two power two n. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so this is uh, this is an e function, um, and then for this <clears throat> for this particular e function. Um, what the siegel sidlowski theorem says is that uh, uh, the values, uh, so in that case, you can, you can write down the differential equation. It's, of course, the Bessel differential equation. And then the, the only poles of the, of the matrix are, are, are zero. <clears throat> and then what the, what the theorem says is that the, the values of the Bessel function and its derivative at a non-zero algebraic number are algebraically independent. <clears throat> And a particular consequence of this is that the zeros, zeros of the Bessel function, they are transcendental numbers, which was uh, like something that people wanted very much to know. And it was uh, somehow <coughs> related to physics uh, because these uh, um, <coughs> zeros uh, express uh, vibration modes of uh, membranes. And it was, it was a whole story in the, in the, in the 19th century to, 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 to know this result for, for zeros of the, of the Bessel function. Okay, so the I, I said the differential equation is the is the Bessel differential equation, and then for the the growth condition, you can to to for it to to be clear, you can rewrite the, the thing uh, a little bit uh, like this. Let me get the formula right. <clears throat> Okay, and then you see, uh, well, then what you need to, to estimate is this, uh, this quantity here. <coughs> and then you, well, the growth condition is essentially a Stirling's formula. And then uh, you see that the four is a, 
you, you can take a well, the common denominator will be four to the n <clears throat> that grows geometrically. Okay, so this is uh, this was uh, like the, the the main example Siegel had in mind, and. Uh, <clears throat> after very shortly after introducing the, the definition of free function, he he uh, he gives uh, another family of examples, uh, which are hypergeometric functions. <clears throat> so, yeah, maybe a remark I, I should do at this point is that. When you look at the differential equations of the already of the exponential and the, the Bessel function, you 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 realize that uh, they, they 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 all have an irregular singularity. So actually, they they have two singularities, one at zero, and uh, at least for the Bessel function, <clears throat> and the other one at infinity. And the one at infinity is uh, is an irregular singularity. So <clears throat> this is why the if you are familiar with hypergeometric functions, you probably know very well uh, Gauss uh, F21. And, and, and this is not the one I'm going to write because that one has a regular, the differential equation has regular singularities everywhere. So, so the ones I'm going to consider are depend on a bunch of parameters uh, that I'm going to, to write down now. And uh, one, the first two are P and Q. And, 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 and here we have this condition that P is uh, strictly smaller than Q. So, so the, this, this condition here is what uh, will give these irregular singularities. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, and, and then we have parameters A1, AP. So these are rational numbers. Um, B1, uh, BQ. So these are rational numbers that are no uh, negative uh, integers. <laughs> And, and then there's an extra degree of flexibility, which is a, 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 an algebraic number lambda. Okay, so to all, to all these parameters, you associate a hypergeometric function, which is uh, the following. Okay, so this, well, this is the notation and then how it is defined. So, um, well, we, here we have the, and we, we have the, the variable here. So let me put the lambda set Q minus P to the N. And then the, the, the general term of the series is a, is a quotient of Pohammer symbols of these A's and P's. So, Okay, uh, where uh, the Pohammer symbol is a, is, a, is a generalization of the factorial. So, uh, Pohammer, uh, the nth Pohammer symbol of x is x times x plus one up to x plus n minus one. <clears throat> okay, so you see, you see that uh, with this formula, the Pohammer of one is exactly n factorial. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, um, the particular shape of the formula doesn't matter uh, uh, so much, uh, but I, I, I want to do uh, two, uh, make two comments. So first one is that it's, it's very important that here we, we put the power, the, the, the variable to the power Q minus P. Okay, so <clears throat> in the particular case of the, of the Bessel function, so you see there is a M factorial square here and essentially nothing upstairs. And uh, so this, this, this means that uh, we are going to take uh, for this example, uh, P will be equal to zero and Q is equal to two. And then two minus zero is two. So this is the reason why you find the, the variable to the power two N. And this is important for, 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 for the, the function to be an E function. <laughs> In that case, there is a differential equation, which is the, well, hypergeometric differential equation. And the, the condition about the growth uh, is, well, still properties of the factorials. And for the denominators, it's a bit uh, trickier. And then you need to use the, the prime number theorem, or at least some weak form of it, like, a, like the, 
the lowest uh, uh, common multiple of one to the n is uh, at most uh, three to the n, for example, these kind of things. <laughs> okay, so, uh, well, as I said, best, the Bessel function is a particular case of a hypergeometry function, same for the exponential, for the, the exponential you take p equals to zero, q equals to one. And, and, and then uh, after, after introducing this example, so, well, also, uh, you can prove quite easily that uh, um, if you the, the the usual operations on functions they preserve e functions so a product of uh, two e functions is an e function same for the sum same for the derivative if you want to do derivative so uh, starting from uh, from this uh, family of hypergeometric uh, e functions you can produce uh, a lot of them by considering the algebra generated by by them so. And then the, the, the question Siegel asks in, in his paper right after introducing the, the definition and, and, the, and this example is if you get everything in this way. So question Siegel is, is the uh, Cuba set algebra generated by this hypergeometric e functions or equal to all e functions <coughs> okay so um <coughs> let me let me remark that it, it is it is not hard to to write down an e function which is not literally equal to to one of these uh, hypergeometrics, because uh, here I, I gave the, the the explicit formula, but uh, one way to characterize hypergeometric uh, functions is uh, that when you when you take two successive uh, coefficients, so you look at this and the next one for n plus one, <coughs> uh, you you consider the quotient, and when you look at the quotient as a function of n, this is a rational function. It's a it's a quotient of two polynomials. And then, uh, and then, what you find here are essentially the the roots of these polynomials. <laughs> okay, so it's it's not hard to write an e function which has the property that the 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 the, the quotient of uh, successive quotients are not a rational function of n. But what is uh, much harder to control is uh, that well, you start you start taking uh, products and linear combinations of uh, of of these hypergeometrics, and then you vary all parameters. And how how do you show that something is not of this shape? So, so that was Siegel's question. And then uh, <clears throat> the, um, on the results that were known be, before our work with uh, Petter, so that one positive result first. So, so this was proved by Gorelov in uh, 2004, right? And <clears throat> it was the result that the answer is yes, if you only look at E functions that satisfy a differential equation of order at most two. So the answer is yes, if uh, differential equation of order one or two. <clears throat> okay, so this, this, is, this is, for example, the case of the exponential order one and the Bessel function order two. And, and essentially you can produce all examples starting from, from these two. And then, uh, so later, so this was in 2020, so Fischler and Rivoal, <clears throat> they proved that the answer uh, is uh, no, starting from uh, order three, <clears throat> if you, if you assume uh, some form of the Grothendieck period conjecture, so let me just write the Grothendieck period conjecture. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> I don't want to say much more at this point, maybe during the questions if you want to know more, but uh, um, let's say that. Uh, well, at least uh, Peter and I and 
many of the people in this room, they we believe very hard in this growth and this period conjecture. So this was a strong indication that uh, the answer uh, should be no, starting from order three, and uh, that maybe uh, since this is a statement about functions, you can try to prove it uh, uh, in, in in a way that uses uh, techniques about functions rather than techniques about their special values. <clears throat> okay, and that's that's. So we were very lucky to 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 be able to did, to do this. So, and the theorem we we prove is that indeed uh, the the answer is no. <clears throat> and <clears throat> it is uh, generically no. So I'm 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 going to to explain a method to uh, to to produce e functions starting from a polynomial of degree four. And for most polynomials, uh, what you get uh, will not be in the algebra generated by hypergeometric uh, E-functions. Okay. <clears throat> and it is, it is not one of these uh, generic uh, results where you know that, uh, okay, for, <laughs> for almost all examples, then the answer is no, but you, you are unable to write down a particular example. So in this case, there's really, you give me a polynomial and then I can give you an example of an E-function and, uh, and so let me let me just write down one example. Uh, so um, you consider the sum uh, over n, so set to the n, and then the coefficient. Well, it's a bit complicated. So it goes from zero to integral part of two n over three, and then uh, you have a Pohammer symbol of. Uh, uh, one over four, and then uh, a product of two factorials. <clears throat> okay, so this particular series is an E function. That is uh, transcendental over the Cuba set algebra generated by hypergeometrics. <laughs> and it, it, this particular one satisfies a, a differential equation for the three, so it's the, the smallest uh, possible possible example. Okay, <clears throat> so I guess this uh, this is the end of the first part of the lecture. So maybe it's a good moment if you want to ask anything. And in the remaining half an hour, I will tell you something about the proof, and then I'll I'll try to demystify this this formula and and put a bit of geometry into, into the picture. Could I just ask, um, um, so in fact, I was going to ask about the geometry. Do, do the hypergeometric E functions have a geometric meaning? I mean, do they arise as monodromy or something? Uh -huh. um, yes, so uh, I, I, I guess there are different ways to, 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 to answer the question. Uh, one particular way is that the, the that they have an integral representation, <clears throat> which is uh, well, it's uh, a generalization of the, the the one for the Gauss uh, hypergeometric function, except that you have the exponential of uh, an exponential inside the formula. <clears throat> and when you when you look carefully at the at the at the integral formula, what you find is that you you have a, a tower of Fermat curves. Oh. Uh, and uh, well, you would like to say this. This is this is a, a period function for some family of algebraic varieties, except that you cannot uh, expect this because of, in in that case the the <laughs> differential equation will have regular singularities. <clears throat> but uh, each of these varieties comes with a function, and 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 then uh, you well you have a similar theory for exponential periods. Uh -huh. And and then and then it's a, it's a family of what is the exponential period family of of a, a function of a family of like uh, towers of Fermat curves, oh, uh, and 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 it, this this was also a strong indication that the answer to the question was probably no because there's there's this general um expectation that all e functions will come from geometry in, in such a way so you you can find a, 
a family of varieties with a function and then and then consider the exponential period function. And then somehow that would be yet to say that you can you can relate the, the geometry of all these pairs of a variety of a function to, to, to a vibration of Fermat which was was I mean very very unlikely. So the, the geometry is so particular that this was also an indication of the answer should be no. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? I have a question. Yes. Uh, hi, Javier. Um, this is Bruno. Um, uh -huh. is, there, ah. is, there, <laughs> is there an intrinsic? <laughs> so the question is: Is there an intrinsic characterization of uh, uh, the class of, uh, uh, I mean, of irregular differential equation uh, that corresponds to E function? Uh, yes, this is this is going to to come uh, now. Uh, it, it, maybe it's well, it's not the best we would like to have, but uh, we we know these equations. Uh, I mean, they, they satisfy very particular equations, and we know a lot of information about them. And <clears throat> and then I, I guess you you can you can conjecture that everything that satisfies these properties will will have a basis of e, of e functions. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is this is this is coming uh, right now. Okay, great, thanks. <laughs> and I will come to Rome. Ah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let me let me let me tell you the strategy of the proof. <clears throat> so the yeah, as I said, the idea is to reformulate this as a as a question of uh, differential equations. <clears throat> so so we are going to so reformulate as a question <clears throat> about, <clears throat> and th these are going to be uh, differential equations whose only singularities are zero and infinity. So I will maybe uh, talk about. Uh, vector bundles with connections on GM. <clears throat> okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to have two uh, categories, H and, and E. <clears throat> okay, so you should think uh, H is, E is the, the category of all differential equations of E functions and H will be uh, that of uh, hypergeometric uh, uh, e functions, and then we want to see that this uh, this inclusion is not uh, is not an equality. <coughs> okay, and I I need to introduce a bit of uh, terminology, a bit of d modules, but it's really very mild. Uh, but I I cannot uh, tell something hundred percent correct without without doing this. So um, <coughs> I'm I'm going to look at the the inclusion of uh, GM into into A one. And, and then uh, we have the algebra of differential operators on, on A1, <clears throat> which is uh, uh, included in, in, in that of uh, GM, so where, where set is invertible. And then, uh, so if you start with a with a d module on on GM, <clears throat> okay. So well, really, a module a module for this for this ring. Uh, so <clears throat> the the operation that is going to be uh, crucial for us is uh, the Fourier transform of uh, G. Lower star of m, so <laughs> looks scary, but uh, it's it's very easy actually. So <laughs> first, uh, yeah. So you 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 start you start with a with a module for 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 this for this ring, and then you can you can turn it into a module for this ring just acting through this inclusion. Okay, so so this is what the what the g uh, lower star means. So so this means d a one acts through. Uh, this inclusion here <laughs> okay <laughs> and then the the Fourier transform is uh, well like like you do for the for, for differential equations if you have a function that satisfies a differential equation and then you want to find a differential equation for the for a Fourier transform 
So you you know that you you need to make said act. You need to put a sign somewhere. So set with act as minus derivative and the derivative will act as multiplication by by set. <clears throat> okay, so this is this is this is what this uh, what this symbol means. So it's a uh, you start with a module over for, for d module over gm and then through this operation you find a a, a d module over a1. <clears throat> okay. And uh, so now I can define e and uh, the the fact that uh, what I'm going to, to to write makes sense and it's the reasonable thing to do it it relies uh, heavily on on uh, on uh, work of uh, Ivan Ray who uh, who uh, who characterized the, the the differential equations that an E function uh, satisfies so <clears throat> so I'm maybe hiding a little bit uh, this but it is it is behind the fact that. Uh, what I'm going to write is reasonable. <clears throat> okay, so E is the is the category of uh, modules over GM uh, with uh, two properties. <clears throat> First property is that when you do this when you do this operation and you find a well you will find a D module over A one you want that it has regular singularities. So you you are back to the to the wall, for example, of the differential equation satisfied by periods <coughs> in families. And then the, the the second property is that M has a basis of solutions in um, <coughs> um, so well let me I don't need to write this. So maybe of the form well you would like to say uh, <laughs> e functions but uh, e functions are, are are entire functions so uh, this is this is too much to ask it would be it will mean there is no there is no monodromy uh, around zero for example <laughs> so you 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 just put a bit of monodromy so uh, you want a, a basis of solutions of the form uh, so let me write <clears throat> okay of this form where uh, B is a, a positive integer and A is a rational number this is an e function and you 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 can take a complex uh, linear combinations of those <clears throat> okay so and then the for example this this work of ivan Re says that every e function is a solution of uh, of a differential equation of this of this uh, kind Okay, which is not <coughs> not not at all obvious. So it says, for example, that uh, well, you will have your your e function can be completed to a basis with uh, where all the other elements are of this shape. So essentially, also e functions with a bit of monodromy. So you you could think of this as some kind of uh, like Galois stability of of e function inside the solutions of the differential equations. Okay, so this is e. And, and 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 then the these conditions imply that uh, because at the beginning I said that I was going to look at the vector bundles with connection on GM and actually these conditions imply that the only singularities are zero and infinity so 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 these are uh, these are smooth over GM <clears throat> And the, the good thing about this is that uh, for vector bundles with connection on GM, we have a tensor product. So, so this we will we will use very heavily this this tensor product, and with this tensor product, E is a is a Tanakian category actually. <clears throat> okay, so this is E uh, again. In some sense, this is not an intrinsic 
characterization, right? Because you use the notion of a function to characterize the equations, but yeah, that's that's that that's true. So the uh, the 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 way it goes. So you you talk about uh, well, you you think your d module is cyclic, so you you talk about differential operators, and and then what you what you do is you take the Fourier transform. And 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 then there is a there is a condition about this uh, Fourier transform that is called the, <clears throat> the Bombieri or the Galoshkin condition. So it's it's something very close to 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 asking that the p curvature is nilpotent for all p. So this kind of condition. I see. I see. <clears throat> and and in that way you can you can you can characterize e operators. And, okay. Okay. and yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and, and and then this this is what is precisely what is hidden in in the work of of uh, Andre. <laughs> okay, so this is this is E, and then H um, is uh, inside E is the um, <clears throat> well the, the Tanakian subcategory if you want uh, uh, generated by the the equations by of hypergeometric differential equations uh, functions. So then I can subcategory generated by uh, <clears throat> those sams. So so now uh, I guess I, I can write down the the formula for for those. So the, the they are of the form quotient by uh, a differential uh, operator. And then um, yeah, so let me so 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 this is an element of the of the vile algebra we had before. And it is actually uh, more convenient to write it in the variable theta. So theta is said uh, DD said, <coughs> which is for example invariant and there uh, the scaling. And 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 yeah, so what it is, so now it is associated to two polynomials P and Q. So P and Q are <laughs> polynomials with um, algebraic coefficients and uh, rational roots. So the roots of these polynomials are essentially the A's and the and the B's before. Okay. Uh, so degree degree of uh, capital P is small P degree of capital Q is a small Q <coughs> and, uh, and and yeah so <laughs> finally what is the what is the operator so the operator is Q uh, computed in so I, I, I leave some space uh, and I'll tell you why <coughs> Yeah, so this 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 will be this will be a a, a differential equation for the uh, hypergeometric uh, function, but you you just need to remember that uh, to make it into an e function, uh, we we put this uh, this uh, this thing here, this q minus p in the exponent. Okay, so <clears throat> and well for for those who knows this this is this is to 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 make the slope at infinity equal to one. So that the, the thing has a chance to be the Fourier transform or something. Okay, so it's the standard trick to to, to transform the slope into one. <clears throat> so you just need to 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 know how to <laughs> change your differential equation, and then what you get is uh, q, you just multiply by q minus p, and then you put uh, the variable to the to the exponent q minus p. <laughs> okay, so you 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 take you take all these uh, differential operators for all choices of uh, p and q, and and then you consider all tensor products, all subquestions, all duals. You do all constructions, and then you 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 see what you get inside E, and then this is the this is the category H. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and uh, and we want to know if H is equal to E, and well, we we want to 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 prove that they these two things are not equal and to exhibit some object which is in E but not in H. Okay. And the key observation, so comes now, is that if you take 
one one of those uh, hypergeometric uh, uh, modules and then uh, you consider the well, the operation we did so the Fourier transform of the extension to a1 <clears throat> So the, the 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 singularities of this uh, d module are very symmetric. So it has very symmetric singularities, <clears throat> and uh, this this means exactly that the the singularities uh, so are uh, zero with some multiplicity that I'm going to explain in a second. And then the, they, they form a, a regular Q minus P gone. So I write this 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 way. So you look at roots of unity of other Q minus P and then maybe a, a nomotesis and each of these is a singularity of multiplicity one and then this zero with some, some, some multiplicity. Okay, so the picture is, the singularities from some configuration like this. <clears throat> okay, so what I mean by the uh, multiplicity is the <laughs> this this um, if you look at the equation, then uh, this is a differential operator for the Q little Q. So so it means the the d module is of rank Q, and then the the multiplicity is Q minus the dimension of uh, basis of uh, holomorphic solutions holomorphic solutions around the point <clears throat> okay so it's, it's in in more sophisticated terms is the dimension of the vanishing cycles at, at this point okay, so if it's of course uh, zero for most points because you have as many holomorphic solutions as the as the other but uh, in in zero you uh, at zero you get this multiplicity and, and the, the the other the other points in this uh, <coughs> polygon they they are of multiplicity one. Okay, <laughs> so uh, and now the problem is similar to when I told you it's it's not hard to write down a this is not hard to to prove you 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 really compute the Fourier transform and then you 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 make the observation that is like this so it was. It was first observed by 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 cats, and uh, but this like when I told you, it's not hard. It's not hard to write down a, a function that is not equal to a hypergeometric function. But then you need to control what happens under under products and linear combinations and so on. And here is the same the same thing. So we need to see uh, how this property uh, propagates uh, through uh, tensor constructions. <clears throat> and <clears throat> what we were able to prove is that for uh, d modules uh, of uh, small um, rank, so meaning uh, rank three, so we take m a three dimensional object of h. <clears throat> uh, so such a um, such an object has a, a, a differential Galois group. Which is a subgroup of uh, GL three, and then the the condition is that uh, <coughs> uh, this differential Galois group is big, so it contains SL three so with differential Galois group containing SL three. <coughs> uh, so if you take an object like this, then uh, the singularities. Of the Fourier transform, they uh, <clears throat> either they 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 lie on on a line, so they are either collinear or uh, they form an equilateral triangle. Okay, it's typically the typically the property uh, you can see this here if you take q equals to three, so so then you either get uh, roots of unity of order three, which form an equilateral triangle, or you you get uh, roots of order one or minus one, and then they are in the line. <coughs> so the but the theorem and, and the, this is the 
well, this is the, I would say the hard part of the work is to, to show that this is stable and the, and the tensor products, duals, uh, sub, sub quotients and so on. <clears throat> okay, so uh, now uh, that we have this, so this, the, this there is a version, uh, an improved version where, so, so, so here uh, M belongs to H and you can, uh, you can improve the theorem a little bit. So uh, by saying this, the notion that M is lead generated by objects of H. And then this is this, this more advanced uh, statement is what will give the transcendence of the E function. So, so that, let me just keep this. Uh, with this, you will prove that the, 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 the function I wrote is not in the algebra, but it could, it could still be algebraic over, over hypergeometrics. Okay, so yeah, let me let me tell you how now how we how we apply the theorem. <coughs> so now we need an interesting supply of objects of dimension uh, three. So objects of dimension three of E, <coughs> and these are these are the ones uh, which are associated to polynomials. So I start with a polynomial. Um, with algebraic coefficients and which is monic of degree four. And then M is going to be the, let me write informally. So it's the differential equation satisfied by an exponential period function. So what you integrate is exponential of minus z times f, your polynomial, um, dx, and you integrate from minus infinity to infinity. <coughs> okay, so this, this integral converges because uh, um, the polynomial is monic, uh, so the, the and, 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 and then you are, you are integrating over the real line. <coughs> And, and and then you can you can explicitly write down this differential equation. It is of order three, but what uh, what matters for us? So, so recall the theorem is a criterion in terms of the Fourier transform, and the the Fourier transform is <clears throat> something we understand very well. So what you need to do is to think of the polynomial as a as a map from a one to a one. <clears throat> And then you 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 take the the trivial d module upstairs. <laughs> you 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 push forward, and this this will be of uh, of rank four. But it only it always contains a a, a copy of the trivial d uh, module downstairs. So so you can quotient by it. So what you get is uh, is this quotient by this trivial copy. <clears throat> okay, and. Uh, in but in particular, uh, we know very well the singularities of this um, d module. So these are the critical values of the polynomial. Okay, so the the images by the polynomial of the zeros of the derivative. <clears throat> okay, so what do we need to do is to choose. You know, you choose f with uh, three distinct critical values. <clears throat> and then there's a, there's a small lemma that uh, tell you that this, this will already imply that uh, SL3 uh, is contained in the, in the differential Galois group. <clears throat> uh, uh, such that uh, we will not collinear nor uh, in an equilateral triangle. <clears throat> and then the, the, the easiest uh, example we could find was uh, the polynomial x4 minus x squared plus x. So the critical values are something like this. <clears throat> and, and, and then the, the theorem says that, uh, well, you can, you can, you can prove and uh, M belongs to E. 
there are several ways to do this. So you can explicitly write down a basis of solutions, or you can you can use this more abstract uh, uh, characterization that I, I I told Bruno about. <laughs> And uh, and then the well the, the we we use the theorem and then the theorem says that uh, this m is not in H. <clears throat> okay, so so then um, the fact that m is uh, simple, <clears throat> which is all it also follows from the. <clears throat> From the differential Galois group computation, uh, will imply that uh, a non-zero non-zero solution of M um, that's that's is is not in the algebra of hypergeometrics. <clears throat> okay, so well, at this point you just need to 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 write down a formula for a solution and then to massage it a, a little bit and and then this will give the the formula I wrote. So uh, recall uh, the function we have is exponential of minus z and then uh, this polynomial. And this is not an e function because it is it is not an entire function. For example, you you do you do set equals to zero. Yeah, <laughs> before when I when I said that the integral converges, I wanted to say for, uh, for example, for real part of z uh, positive. <laughs> it doesn't converge if you do set equals to zero, for example. <clears throat> uh, so so, so, so uh, this, this means that there's a monodromy around uh, set equals to zero, and there's actually monodromy of order four, and you can you can write down the decomposition in, in, into, into monodromy. So by this I, I mean uh, the composition according to, to to a basis of this kind. <clears throat> and what you get is um, well one half gamma of uh, one over four set to the minus three quarters, and then an e function e zero, <clears throat> and then the kind of uh, symmetric thing. Um, Another e function e one, <laughs> and 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 this is uh, if you now uh, if you now compute the the integral just writing the exponential as a power series, uh, the 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 formula for e zero you get is exactly what I wrote in the in the theorem. So this is the this is the function from the theorem. From the main theorem. <clears throat> okay, but you see that the only thing we use is that the polynomial has three distinct critical values that are, that are not on a line on an equilateral triangle, and 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 those they they form some Sarisky uh, then Sarisky open uh, of the of the space of all of all polynomials of degree four, and then for every every point in this in this open, then you will find a, a counter example. Okay, so I guess it's time to stop. So answer some questions if if there are any thank uh, you let's thank uh, let's thank javier for a great uh, for a great talk first